Okay, and and so uh, I want to talk a bit about China now. And so, what is uh, what is China's interest in Bougainville, and what have you observed? Okay, well, well, we'll get to this at some point, but I should just say uh, I I know China very well. I, I've been involved with China since 1984. More on that if if you're interested. But in terms of answering your question. China covets two things about Bougainville. First of all, obviously, the copper and gold resources in the Panguna mine. Just so you understand, the Panguna mine is the only mine that was explored, drilled, and then uh, operated in Bougainville. But the uh, the estimate of uh, pretty much all geologists is there's another two or three Panguna mines in Bougainville Island, okay? The Panguna mine, even though it was mined for 17 years from 72 to 89, still has about 70% of its resources available. And those resources are today worth, ready, $100 billion. I didn't say million, I said $100 billion. About 70% of that is copper, and the rest is gold. So Bougainville is a glittering jewel to anyone, especially the Chinese who want to take it. And China sees two things in Bougainville, not just the natural resources, but Bougainville has not one, but two superb deep water ports. Forget the Solomon Islands right across the sea. Bougainville has the best deep water ports in the Solomon Islands. Bougainville is the largest of the Solomon Islands, even though it's not part of the political entity of the Solomon Islands. And the China China wants the copper and gold, and they also want the ports. And they probably also want some of the uh, fisheries or the fishing uh, areas, right? The fishery resource, that's a good point, Matt. The fishery resource is second only to the gold and copper. It's major. Uh, in the Pacific, there are three or four basic kinds of tuna. One of them is skipjack. 25% of the Pacific skipjack are in PNG waters. And of that 25%, 30% are in Bougainville waters. That is the billions of annual fishing revenues and so forth. So yeah, the fishing is major in, in Bougainville waters. So, you know, uh, obviously, like, you know, we, we've seen this pattern, right, where the, the Chinese Communist Party, they do these, you know, they do these deals with other countries and they send in, um, well, let's just talk about fisheries for a minute. They send in the their, their Chinese commercial fishermen, uh, displacing local fishermen who are then out of work, but then also because of the way the, the Chinese uh, fishing boats do their fishing, they often basically just rape the waters and take take the fish out, destroy the environment, uh, leaving, you know, in a few years, vastly dwindled uh, fish, right? So this is, right, you're, you're already talking about potentially a, a, a major problem if China has a, a, a deal with Bougainville. Um, and then, of course, you know, with the mining, um, you know, that's a whole other story. What what moves has China made to uh, entrench itself into Bougainville? Okay, well, it's important to point out that since Bougainville attained its autonomous region status in 2001, it had its first election under its new constitution in 2005, and there have been essentially four administrations since then. Uh, the first man, Joseph Kabui, died in office. He was the first man in elected president in Bougainville in 2005. He died after three years. There was a caretaker government until John Momus uh, became president in 2005. The Bougainville Constitution enables one to run for two five-year terms, but no more. Mr. Momus uh, was president for 10 years until... Uh, his terms were up, and then uh, Ishmael Tarama became the president in, in 2020. John Momus is not a Bougainvillian. 
He is an ex-priest, which goes a long way when you're running for office in Bougainville because Bougainville is full of devout Christians, 80% of them Catholic and the other 20% of them evangelical. And Mr. Momus is half PNG and half Chinese. Mr. Momus was the ambassador from PNG to China for five years before he became president. So his first move in office was to sign six MOUs with six different SOEs in China. As you, as you folks, I'm sure know, uh, sometimes those papers aren't even worth the paper they're, they're written on. Nothing happened. But the Chinese have been trying to get a hold of the Panguna mine ever since. China supported three men, not one, but three men for president in the presidential election that just concluded with Ishmael Tuarama's victory in, 2000, in September 2020. So China has done everything it can think of to get a, a control of Bougainville. The, the major difference, and you're, you're right, your strategy about all the other Pacific islands, I think, is, is accurate. The major difference in Bougainville is one man, Ishmael Tororama, who wants nothing to do with the Chinese. Ishmael is a highly intelligent, absolutely incorruptible guy who wants to pattern his new nation like, like ours, like the United States. And basically, that's the thing that can preserve Bougainville's independence as a democratic country is that Ishmael is smart enough to realize that China's money, uh, it doesn't mean everything. It's interesting that you said that China supported three different candidates in the presidential election. The person who got elected was somebody who didn't want anything to do with them. I mean, was that part of his campaign of like a, a standing up to the CCP? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, going back to the Bougainville uh, crisis, the Civil War, the military, the guerrilla military organization that fought the crisis was called the Bougainville Revolutionary Army. Ishmael Tororama joined the BRA as a 20-year-old, but rapidly became the clear leader of that guerrilla group. There was a politician who uh, was named the commander of the BRA. His name is Sam Kauna, but Sam really wasn't up in the bush wielding a weapon against the PNG Defense Force. He was trying to be a politician. Sam Kauna is one of the men who came out and told everybody he was not only being backed by the Chinese, but he thought the Chinese were gonna solve all of Bougainville's problems. He was on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation 60 Minutes in the fall of 2018 with all kinds of storyboards showing new ports, a renovated uh, Panguna mine, uh, new roads, airports, and so forth, all to be provided via the Belt and Road Program from his friends in China. So, so they, they backed him. They backed the former president, John Momus, who wanted to change the Constitution so he could run again. And they backed the third man just for good measure. Just to give you an idea, they spent millions of dollars unsuccessfully. Why? Because, yes, Ishmael said... Uh, if we're going to be independent, we're going to be independent as Bougainvilleans, not as a colony of China. Wow. So, yeah, the Bougainvilleans really dodged a bullet there with, with Ishmael, I think. Ab absolutely. It's, it's, you know, when you talked about what happened with the previous administration in Bougainville. Momus. Momus. Right. Like how you said that they had signed some MOUs. Did Bougainvillians start seeing any um, kind of uh, development from China? I'm just wondering, was there was there negativity towards China already by the time of the 2020 election? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Let me go back to something that's fundamental to Bougainville, and, and it really isn't fundamental to a lot of these other Pacific Island nations. When Bougainville won its right to uh, quasi-independence as, as an autonomous region of Papua New Guinea, 
they they got their own constitution and their own presidency. But in the constitution, what is fundamental in Bougainville is that the people control the resources under and above their land. So uh, the government has nothing to do with the resources below your land. There's only one other country in the world where that is also the case. It's right here in the good old U.S. of A. And they, they structured the Constitution so that it would give the people the rights to those resources, because after all, that's why they were fighting the war. OK, Australia came in and took all the resources and said, these don't belong to you and gave them all to other people. So th the landowners are key to any deal you want to make. Now, that's not the China style. OK, what China wants to do is they want to go to you've seen it a, a hundred times. We all have. They want to find the right politician to Greece, pay that person off get control of the resources that way, and then not make any deal with the local landowners, okay? Well, it doesn't work in Bougainville. So every time they try and do it, the Bougainvillians realize, hey, there's some graft-ridden government guy trying to give away my rights. I'm not going to do it. So guess what happened? The big Chinese SOE, encouraged by Mr. Momus, took out the first 10 alluvial mining licenses. That's that's when you're mining gold out of a stream. It's not building a big uh, open pit or a hard rock mine. Took, it, took They took out the first 10 alluvial gold licenses in the Java River, which is right below the Panguna Mine, which is where a lot of gold is. They never made a deal with the landowners. They made a deal with Mr. Momus and his administration. They came in there, they built a 50-man man camp and started mining. And a year later, what happened? The landowners rose up and burned the place to the ground. And, and that's what happens in Bougainville when you don't make a deal with the landowners. And they don't care if you're Chinese or Martian. If you want to make a deal with the landowners, they'll talk to you because they can't harness the resources themselves. But the Chinese, of course, don't pursue those methods.